I wonder as well about the idea of grieving and the idea of going into your grief, um, which for decades we've sort of, I guess, been put under pressure not to do. Um, and that's not, that's quite a broad <laughs> generalization, but I think in general we have been sort of encouraged to get on with things, get back to work, keep yourself busy, you know, don't give in to it, it'll, it'll swallow you. Stiff up a lip. Stiff upper lip, yeah. They they yeah. worked that one out after the Second World War, First World War, and we got stuck with that for a while. And it feels like there's kind of a bit of a movement happening at the moment towards people being able to see grief as a very natural, very normal, very adaptive part of life. And um, there's a quote that I pulled up uh, from our dear friend Julia Samuel, who's a uh, yeah, we love her here at Good Grief. Um, and she says that pain, as much as we never want to feel it and want to do what we can to avoid it is the way that we adjust to a new reality. Um, and I think that's so, I, I think it's as with all of Julia's advice, she's so she just, she's on the money with that. Um, and Mary, I wanted to kind of ask you, do you think we've become pain averse as a society and that nature teaches us that it's okay to let go into that grief and to go into that darkness because spring will come again and that it's, avoiding the pain and this kind of societal obsession we have with carrying on and keep on going and um you know to be kind of on and achieving all the time that perhaps we have become averse to pain and we are now afraid of us yeah i mean it's a it's a subtle thing but i think we're in such pain actually in the avoidance because it's the, the struggle that causes the the real suffering you know the struggle against what is and what is in life is death mm. from the moment we're born we are dying mm. and you know that's quite kind of profound and existential and we don't all go around thinking like that but actually it's in moving towards the discomfort moving into the pain moving and turning towards it is where we will find there is ease and soothing you know and, and neuroscience you know what we know about neuroscience too no more than what we know from the celtic people who absolutely honored and went into the darkness and the uncertainty will the sun return will we have enough food to keep us through the winter they moved in with a deep bow towards it and that is it's like if we can we we're just in this you know you said we're encouraged to uh, to stay away from the pain or to avoid um, and just get on with it. I think we're we're rewarded for that. You know, all our structures um, that are now crumbling um, have rewarded us for always being on, never stopping, never resting, because this this need to be certain, to know what's coming, to to know what's the outcome of of everything we do and. Um, and so actually, I, I've, my sense is we are in immense pain. We're in the realms of hell a lot of the time. And we're just busying ourselves or soothing ourselves with, you know, whether it's too much work or too much uh, of anything. I mean, I did it myself. I have to watch it every day that I am not moving away from myself, moving away from the pain of being a human on the planet right now is massive. And how can I be present to that? Um, and I don't know whether that answers it, but I, I, I don't think it's as straightforward as just we're trying to avoid pain. I think we're in pain. And a lot of the time, yeah, maybe it is as straightforward as that. Um, yeah. And yeah. Actually, when we go to a, you know, when we go and meet it and meet the pain inside us, the grief inside so many of us um that's when the real liberation happens from the pain a lot of people try to fight it don't they and and, and sort of you know not surrender to that moment of of, of letting it go and and i think you know we're all we're all have been guilty of that sort of thing and i remember learning from my children that you know i, I remember two or three days after joy died seeing my son just have a complete sort of anger breakdown and sort of just thrashing and beating and 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 pummeling the hell out of the sofa so and I'd been being you know, although I'd cried I'd been sort of strong still you know but 
But what, a couple of nights later when they were in bed and I felt that same anger well up, instead of trying to sort of go, no, I'm fine, I let that go and I did the same as he'd done. And you suddenly go, oh, okay. I, I realise actually that my, that's what my body, that's what everything, all my instincts are telling me to do. And it and it it felt better to acknowledge that that pain was there rather than try and fight it and hide it and push it under. Um, and it, it's the acknowledging those moments of the of the darkness that, that then releases those little bits of pressure they're causing it's it's kind of what you know it, with me it was the process of doing that with the doodles if i if i had a dark day and i drew one by the fact of drawing it and letting that out it instantly made that bit of pain feel better because i'd acknowledged it so i think it is the acknowledging rather than the suppressing or ignoring that that's so important i love that yeah and that reminds me of that time I remember the day I got the word that my dad was diagnosed with cancer and every sinew in my body, every impulse wanted to get into the car, drive to the west of Ireland and just make tea and make sure everyone was okay. And I made a decision not to. I said, no, like that's the good girl way of doing things. That's mm -hmm. me trying to save everybody. Um, and I made a decision, no, I'm going to do this journey. I, I'm not going to hide for one minute my heartbreak. And as a result, I had the most beautiful nine months of intimacy with my father that I wouldn't have had had I just gone down and made some tea and said, okay, everybody, let's, let, you know, it's okay, we'll get through this. I just, I used to throw myself on him when he would come out of hospital and just be weeping. And he just, you know, it was so amazing because he just went, oh my God, you know, he was able to see the joy of that in just being able to, see his daughter who was absolutely heartbroken um, and not hiding it or pretending or avoiding it. And, I, and it really changed me completely when I moved through that journey with him in that way rather than the old way, which I would have been, you know, you know, just get on with it, it'll be okay, we'll be fine, missing out so much of that journey. Yeah, absolutely. And Catherine Mannix talks about this as well in her book. Catherine is a palliative care doctor and an uh, amazing author as well. And she talks about how you can repress the pain and you can, it's very possible to do that, but then you're missing all of the other emotions as well. And you're numb to everything and you're numb to life and you're missing the extraordinary craziness of life by blocking yourself off to the pain and the, by really experiencing grief, that's where we find uh, you know, the, the true light. and and. And living in the light and being able to and i know mary you talk a lot about this of living between the lightness and the dark and being able to you know pick up those two poles and and, and kind of maneuver your way easily between them um which is exactly again ties in so perfectly with the wheel at every point on the wheel you've got the balance across the wheel it, uh, midsummer the brightest sunniest most beautiful day you know the, the the oak king and the holly king are fighting as it were in the woods and holly wins which means you're, from the moment you've been midsummer you're heading back into winter and and and, and the flip side in, in the middle of winter you know as soon as the the oak king has won on the winter solstice the light is coming back so there's always this flip side this opposite going on in the darkest dark the the, the shoots are coming through of the of the green and all that and i think that's it's the same with the grief in the darkest moments of your grief those little green shoots are going to be there underneath waiting to come through you know mm, i love that i love yeah. i know that that um metaphor i love it <laughs> beautiful yeah me yeah. neither i knew that at the moment of the winter solstice the summer solstice is born mm -hmm. that we so forget you know but and the darkest night of your soul yeah. then the light is born yeah 